everyone. Today we have an intriguing author with us from Chennai. Though he has been residing most part of his life here in Gurgaon, he's written an amazing book that's called This Too Shall Pass by Ilango Thambia. Am I pronouncing it right, sir? Yes, I'm wrong, sir. Right. So, sir, please first of all tell us something about yourself as an author. We want to know more about you. I lived uh, my life in better part of my life in Kabul. And uh, I have been part of this uh, watch revolution, the, the telecom revolution in India. I held the senior positions in uh, Tata Group and Airtel. Mm -hmm. And now I help uh, smaller companies. I mentor them and guide them and coach them. I also have a small company I'm running my own. And uh, of late, my passion is uh, into fitness. Oh. And I've done the marathons. And please uh, inform you, a couple of weeks back, I've done even a half hour. Wow, that, that's amazing. <laughs> that's really amazing. So, so please tell us something about your book. Your, I love the book cover though. It is a speaking something else and the title is completely different. Uh, but there is something which is very intriguing about this whole uh, book cover and the book title. Please tell us about the title. This too shall pass. So, this is, uh, this is in a manner of it is my own story and uh, our family story. And my son, with you, when he was 17 years old, just at the cusp of his career as it's starting, he suffered a brain hemorrhage. Oh. And uh, for those of you who do not know brain hemorrhage, she's uh, often fatal. And if it is not fatal, it leaves irreparable damage. Oh. And uh, this is, uh, there is no history of it, it suddenly happened. And uh, this is the story on how, as a family, we coped with that with the help of our well-wishers and uh, how we helped him come out of it, which is quite a bad thing. So the book is, in a sense of it, it is a non-fiction book. It captures our journey along with all the people who helped us and how to cope with this such an important problem. Okay. I thought that's really... I'm sure that that moment would have been very... Uh, those days would have been very stressful for you going through something like this, that's incredible. Uh, so how long did you took to complete this whole book, approximately? See, this uh, happened about five years back. Okay. This, uh, the hemorrhage for uh, Vidhu happened about five years back. And this lockdown came as a kind of blessing in this case, in a sense. So I had the time, really that travel to office was not happening, so we could take time to do that. And I had journaled the journey then. So all we had to do was to, at least that all the incidents were written down then. I had to kind of get them there and it took about three months for me to do that. Okay. But the most painful part was editing. Because every time the edited version I go through, I end up reliving the, all of those days now. Yeah. So uh, more often than not, I would take so long to edit because I didn't want to relive the journey again. I understand because when you read it, you go inside the book and it takes exactly. you back to the bad, sad memories. Yeah. Okay, so why did you? What? Where did you? When did you realize that you have to write a book? What was that that hit you that you know that now I have to write a book? It's a very interesting uh, question. See, the brain injury is very unique. Every brain injury leaves a different damage. There are, you know, it doesn't happen no matter whether it is old people, younger people. Uh, some people leaves one side paralyzed, uh, some people can't speak, some people can't hear and some people get bedridden all through the life. It is quite unique. I've met a lot of people in this uh, the last three or four years. Quite a lot of people who had heard about us reached out to me for help now. And uh, so we thought we should share our journey and with you was one of the few people we came out of that with that very negligible impact. So we thought we must share our knowledge which will help others to cope with that, not only the patient but also the caregivers. How to cope with such a one. And while we are using this injury as an example, but it can be for any problem in life. And a problem in life, how do you cope with the problem? Right. So what has been your inspiration throughout writing this book with your son or there was this uh, issues that were revolving around it. What was the inspiration around that? Clearly the inspiration when doctors told us the prognosis is not easy. Okay. And uh, we 
we kind of we never give up. We are very positive all along, saying he is not going to go through that. He will emerge. But uh, my son, he really fought this one. And at the age of 17, when we go through such a serious injury, and uh, when doctors tell me he may not be able to live, and to fight this one and come out, I think he has been a major inspiration. We really? thought we must share that story of uh, him to inspire others who would have fighting a similar battle. Right. That's really incredible. And uh, I mean, this is a very shattering uh, moment, but then coming out so brave is something commendable to put it across. So what what is the best part about the book that you feel that this is the best moment or the best part about the book? Yeah, there are actually, since I've written the book, everything is a good part, but um, I, I kind of, this cover, like, for example, I like this cover. This is being designed by my daughter. She's okay. a designer. Okay. And uh, this in a manner of it indicates that I started with a nice cover it looked me. It just, uh, this is my son's picture with the wires which are so many other are going. Right. And uh, it kind of supposed to indicate that how he is breaking out those chains and the barriers to come out of it. Okay, so that is what this is supposed to capture. But what I've kind of captured in this book Anna, is more than how, what the journey is about. There are what are the key learnings what we went through and how can people apply that right. in their personal problems. It doesn't matter it's a medical problem, it can be a career problem, it can be interpersonal problem. How do you deal with that? True. For example, to give an example, we always say you can never control the events. The events happen by themselves. Often people end up wasting the time trying to manage the event or worrying and crying about the incidents that have happened now. But what matters is how do you respond to the event? And this is an example on telling the people stop worrying about the event. That has happened. By saying why did it happen to me not going to help you, not going to help the people around you now. We must figure out what your response is going to be and restate your expectations and then it gets better. That is for example at the end of it this is what we want to take away to be able to So you are coming up with second book, any plans? As of now, no. This is uh, this has been a quite a first time for me to write such a long one now. This has been a uh, quite happy for me what I've done now. Right. And so you are going to celebrate this first time. <laughs> <laughs> After all the crucial times that you have put it down in one book, it's time to celebrate that. And uh, I hope your son is doing pretty well now. Yes, I really, really, really well. convey him my regards and I hope he's doing absolutely fine. Is there something that you want to say to your readers? Yeah, I, as I told you, there are simple uh, takeaways, respond to the events in a manner which suits it. Don't worry about the events now. And learn to appreciate the people around you. And uh, there are the number of people who helped us through this difficult journey is unimaginable. And I always tell people, ask for help, it is perfectly fine. And the near people, those will be able to help us a lot now. Right. And I also want to tell the readers, the proceeds of this book will go to a, the, my foundation called the Ganga Foundation, okay. which helps the people with the spine in there. Oh. So all my earnings will go into that the Ganga Foundation, a great which is uh, helping that. Right. I am also starting yeah, brain injury support group now because India doesn't have a very robust one now. Right. All the people who are go through that, they do not know how to go about it taking a support. We want to take a support, we want to launch a support group in the lines of cancer support group or a COVID support group, which will gain the people, help them how to cope with the problem. This is really a miracle though. <laughs> I am already getting goosebumps and I am so excited to read the book. People, uh, this too, Shaz Pass is available on Amazon, Flipkart, uh, Kindle and also on other portals. It's available on the bookstore. So please buy your copy, understand the journey and go through it. I think this, is, this has a beautiful message. So you must read this book for sure. Thank you.